In a previous video, we defined the notion of the exterior derivative on a differential m form on Rn. Now we want to review that and look at a couple of examples and prove a couple of special properties of this derivative. So let's recall that an m form on Rn is defined in the following way. So we've got the sum over a multi-index i, f sub i dx sub i, where those f sub i's are differentiable functions. And I should say they're smoothly differentiable functions. And then i is this multi-index, so it's i1 to i m, because here we have an m form. And these are increasing numbers. So i1 is bigger than or equal to one, which is strictly less than i2, all the way up to i m, which is less than or equal to n. And then dxi is given by dxi1 wedge all the way up to dxim, and that's called an elementary m form. And we defined how that acts on a tangent space in previous videos, so check that out if you need to. Now next, the exterior derivative of this differential m form is going to give you a differential m plus one form, and it's defined in the following way. So d omega, so we're still summing over all of these multi-indices, but now we sum from j equals one to m, we take the partial of each of these functions, so the partial of fi with respect to xj, and then we have dxj, so that elementary one form, wedged into our elementary m form, creating this object right here is an elementary m plus one form, making the whole thing a differential m plus one form. Okay, so for our first example, we have a one form on R3, and we're gonna find its derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. So d omega, so that means we need to take the partial of this with respect to x, um, and then dx wet, wedge dx, the partial of this with respect to y, dy wedge dx, the partial of this with respect to z, dz wedge dx. But notice most everything here cancels. So let's do this quickly. The partial with respect to x is 3x squared dx wedge dx, but dx wedge dx itself is zero, so that cancels out. But now the partial with respect to y is gonna be zero. The partial with respect to z is going to be zero just because of what function we have out here. Now let's look here. So we're gonna have the partial of this with respect to x, so that's gonna give us two y, and then we have dx wedge dy. And then we'll have the partial with respect to y, so that'll be plus two x dy wedge dy. But just like before, whenever you've got two of these elementary one forms that are the same wedged with each other, you get zero. And then notice there's no z here, so when we take the partial with respect to z, that cancels out for another reason. Okay, great. So now let's look at this last one. So we're gonna have the partial with respect to x, so that's gonna be y, z, and then we'll have dx wedge dz. We'll have the partial with respect to y, so that's gonna be x, z, then we have dy wedge dz, and then finally we have the partial with respect to z, so that's gonna be x, y, and then dz wedge dz. Now just like before, that's got, that guy's gonna cancel. Now let's see if we can add anything together, if we have any like terms, but we don't have any like terms here because this is a dx wedge dy. Here we have a dx wedge dz, and down here we've got a dy wedge dz. So no like terms, that's as simple as we can get. Okay, let's look at another example. So let's say maybe we have omega this time, so that's x squared, y squared, and then maybe dx wedge uh, dz, great. And then maybe for another one, we'll have two x cubed y z and then dy wedge dz. Good. So now we're gonna work through these just one bit at a time. So d omega in this case. So we'll take the partial of this with respect to x and then we'll do dx wedged into this, but that's gonna give us zero. So let's write that out just for old time's sake. So here we have two x y squared then dx wedge dx wedge dz. But like I said before, that cancels. And then for the partial with respect to y, we're gonna have two y dy wedge dx wedge dz. So that's what we get for that. And then for the partial with respect to z, notice this doesn't have any z's in it, so we're gonna get zero for that. Okay, 
So now let's go move on to this one. So the partial with respect to x will give us 6x squared y z. Then we have dx wedge dy wedge dz. And then let's talk through if we do the partial with respect to y, we'll have to include a dy wedge dy, that's gonna cancel. And then similarly for the partial with respect to z, so that's gonna cancel as well. In fact, any time here that this xj term is one of these dxi k terms, the thing's gonna cancel. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify anything here, and we can because we can commute this dx past this dy and pick up a minus sign, and that'll give us 6x squared yz minus 2y, and now we can group these guys together into uh, alphabetical order, so dx wedge dy wedge dz. Good. And so now uh, I'll clean this up and we'll look at some nice properties that this exterior derivative has. So we just got done looking at two concrete examples. In one, we found the derivative of a one form, and in the other, we found the derivative of a two form, producing a two form in the first place and a three form in the second place. Okay, and now we wanna look at a general property that this exterior derivative satisfies. And that has the following setup. We've got omega, which is a differential m form, and mu, which is a differential k form then the derivative of omega wedge mu is equal to the derivative of omega wedge mu plus minus one to the m omega wedge, the derivative of mu. So it's important to notice here that this almost looks like the product rule. In fact, if m is even, it is the product rule. There's actually a name for a type of map like this, and it's called a derivation on a super algebra. And in this case, the super algebra is the space of differential forms, and the operation is this wedge product. Okay, great, so let's go ahead and look at this proof. And so we're gonna do this via straightforward calculation. So let's go ahead and set omega equal to the sum over a multi-index i of these differentiable functions fi and then these elementary m forms dxi. And then we'll set mu equal to something similar, so it'll be the sum over a multi-index j, and then we'll maybe call it gj, and then dxj. And now that's a k form. So from here, we can notice what omega wedge mu is. So that's gonna be this double sum over i and j of the product of these two functions, f, i, g, j. And then we're gonna take the wedge product of these forms, d, x, i, wedge, d, x, j. So this is an m form, this is a k form, making the whole thing an m plus k form. Now we'll take the derivative of this using our definition over here. And so we have d of omega wedge mu. So that's gonna be equal to still this double sum over i and j, but now we have this single sum on the inside and that is over these partial derivatives. So we'll use an index r going from one to n and then we have the partial with respect to xr of f i g j, good. And then we need to introduce a dxr wedged with a dxi and a dxj that were already there. So now I'll just use the product rule to take the derivative of that product. That'll give me this sum over my multi-indices i and j. And then I still have this sum r from one to n. And now I have the partial of f sub i with respect to xr and then times gj plus f sub i times the partial of gj with respect to xr. So like I said, that's just by the product rule. And then we have dxr wedge, dxi wedge, dxj. Okay, good. Now what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll split it into two sums across this guy right here. So that's gonna give us this sum over multi-indices i and j, and then the sum r goes from one to n of d f i d x r g j, and then we have d x r wedge d x i wedge d x j. So that's what I get from that first bit, good. And then next I have plus 
This is the sum over the multi-indices again, i and j. And then the sum r goes from 1 to n. And now I have f sub i, d, g, j, dx, r. And then this same thing, dx, r, wedge, dx, i, wedge, dx, j. Good. So now what I want to notice here is that this first term is exactly what we want it to be. And that is, it is this guy right here, d omega wedge mu. Great. So now we just have to figure out how to get that minus 1 to the m in. But it's not too bad, because remember that this guy right here, this dxi, is an m form. It's an elementary m form. So that means if we pass this thing across the elementary m form, we'll pick up minus 1 to the m. So let's just draw that out. So we pass that through there, and we end up with dxi wedge dxr wedge dxj. But we have to include this minus 1 to the m out front. Good. But now that puts this second term exactly into the form that we want. In other words, it's minus 1 to the m omega wedge d mu. Good. And so that finishes the proof. And that's a good place to stop.